Hi Leo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your September 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. Now before we dive into this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Feeling yourself become centered, calm, and at peace as you enter into this quiet, safe space. All right. So what I'm going to be doing first is I'm going to be moving over your Moonology and your Queen of the Moon cards. These I will layer on top of the tarot at the end to really give Luna, to really give the moon a voice of her own. I have everything set up for you, the phases of this moon, and it, this reading spans from full moon, from to full moon, from full moon to full moon. There we go. So it is from September 2nd to October 1st. So let's see here. How... Will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic, with one bonus card. Put this down right over here. So the left-hand side, this is your inner self. The middle is your emotional self, your heart. And the right-hand side is your public self. And of course, the bonus card. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the Seven of Pentacles, so patience for the harvest that is coming. The Nine of Pentacles, that harvest is greatly enjoyed. You have the Three of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is a gift from God, Source, Spirit. However, you see the divine, the universe of knowledge and of understanding. This is very highly linked to the realm of prosperity, the realm of money or wealth as you see it. So it's financial wealth or something you value as much as money in your life. And then we have here the Magician. So you are absolutely taking this gift of knowledge that's coming in. It's really empowering you and moving you forward. There's something karmic that is coming your way. You've faced this before and you're really going to be tired. You're going to think, oh my gosh, not this again. But it starts to exalt you. It starts to give you a different outlook. It like pushes you in a direction that you hadn't thought of before or you hadn't seen and you, again, are definitely taking this gift and it's moving your life forward much more quickly and it's moving you forward emotionally much more quickly, much more powerfully than you had expected. This leads you to the public arena 
where you have the Three of Swords. Your heart is broken. And this doesn't mean that it's broken forever. It does mean that you're dealing with heartbreaks, with pains, with disappointments. And this makes sense because this is a very, very sensitive moon. This is the full moon in Pisces. This is the mystic moon, the dreamer's moon, the poet's moon, the witch's moon. This is the moon of the high priestess. And with this moon being of the high priestess, we look at things that we would rather hide away from, that we would rather kind of put in the deepest, darkest space of a closet and say, you know what, I'm good, thanks. And here it's like, no. No, you, you see it, you own it, because then it never owns you again. And you're setting yourself free, which is something that is absolutely beautiful. You have the death card, which I love this after, I love that spirit brings this right after looking at the heartbreaks and the pain. This is Scorpio energy. This is a time frame of October 23rd to November 21st. And this is a sense of a dying way of the old self, a rebirth of the new. This is the great equalizer, right? And this is also a sense of, really just, it's walking a different path. It's embracing a more unique you and a greater truth. It's, it's keeping things and holding things closer to the chest. And as you do so, you move forward in your passion and in your knowledge and in your understanding. And you do not care if other people do not understand. During this time, it's about you. And you are absolutely embracing this because it's after you face a, a karmic debt that you're looking at things and you're like, I am reborn. I am empowered, I am invigorated, and I am not being held back yet. You have judgment right here. You have your angels rising you, raising you up. You are rising to new heights. You are looking at things more powerfully, more truthfully. And this makes you a student of your prosperity. It brings you back to the prosperity that is linking you in each stage to the wealth that you want within your life, to the bounty that is yours. And then we have the Queen of Wands. I love this. This is you in the Minor Arcana. You are represented by the Wands in the Minor Arcana. You are represented by the Strength card in the Major Arcana. You are here. You are fierce. You are determined. And nothing and no one is holding you back. So there's this fiery intensity to this time for you that is linking you to the full moon in October. October 1st is the, the full moon in Aries. So you do have that very strong link here, but it's also to your truth, your power, and your understanding and to the place that you want to be, body, mind, and spirit. And this is really what you are embracing, enjoying. And so here we start off with the full moon in Pisces. This says balance spirituality with practicality, which, yes, is a very big part of this because your heart is so intensely connected and the veil between the spirit world and the earthly world is so thin that you are going to be called to higher power. You are embracing here your personal power as you surrender to the divine. This is a time when embracing compassion and the deities of compassion. So Kuan Yin, the Virgin Mary, you know, all these deities that show compassion within, within life. These are going to be very important figures for you during this time, even if it's just in kind of an academic, you know, kind of scholarly pursuits, kind of, you have questions, you're seeking answers. These, this is going to be a place where you find them in the realm of compassion. However, compassion unveils itself for you. This is also highly linked to the high priestess. The illusions and the mysteries of the world, their veil is being lifted. You're seeing the truth of things. You, you're seeing the mask being taken from people's faces and you're seeing what lays underneath. And sometimes that's not what we want to see at all. We like the mask. We like the, the masquerade that people put on. We like the person that we want them to be and not the person that they are. So this moon can be highly intense because of that. And because of this, you can crave sleep and meditation and prayer, which are all lovely things. But you can also crave sleep for oblivion, you know, just pulling the covers up over your head and saying, you know what, I'm done. Also, drugs and alcohol can become very enticing during this time because the truth of the world is coming at you with intensity. And you might sit there and be like, no, I, I don't want this. This is, this is too much. So just be mindful of this. Be mindful of the spiritual and be mindful of the powerful and harness your power. Do not let it harness you because that's going to be when you see the world as being too harsh, too much, too, too angry, too, too bitter, and you're going to step back from it. And so here, as you move forward, this is also going to be as the veil is the thinnest. You're going to see that you are creatively astoundingly inclined. The knowledge is, your knowledge is enhanced by the light of the moon. So at night, you are going to be very inspired. 
this would be a great time to really work on whatever projects you want to work on or you know if you're sitting there you're stuck with something at work or at school to really kind of dive deeper into it at night you're going to find that this is a time where answers are illuminated where you really hear spirit whispering in your ear guiding you forward and it brings you to a balance and to a place that you never thought you could inhabit and it moves you forward in a way that is breathtaking it really does and then on the 17th of September we move into the new moon and the new moon is a time where seeds are planted is a time of beginnings and this new moon is in Virgo and it says it's time to give rather than take and here with all this earth sign energy it greatly connects you to this Virgo new moon and you're seeing yourself planting the seeds gaining a harvest gaining gifts from divinity looking at the way that you desire moving forward everything that you have created everything that you have cultivated and this is a time of beginnings and it's a beginning when it comes to the wealth of this earth and when it comes to you embracing the wealth of this earth and as you embrace these beginnings, you walk through this portal to a new time. You watch these seeds become more. You watch these seeds start to grow, start to move forward, start to manifest into what you are dreaming of, start to take, take root. You see that a new start is coming. You see that there is a new light, a new understanding, a new hope, a new dream that leads you forward. And as you are embracing this, this is a time, again, when that inspiration leads you forward. This is a time where... Yes, it says give rather than take, okay? And during this time, you're going to think, oh, I have to give to everybody else rather than taking for myself. And that's not exactly what it means. It means to give into this graceful energy of compassion and love and make sure that you are giving it to yourself and not just taking it and holding it, holding on to it and thinking, oh, okay, I can use this later. It's like, no, this is a beautiful dance. This is a beautiful way of moving forward. This is living poetry. You know, this is the way that we want life to be, but there's also a sense of it being a little bit more intense, a little bit more, you know, real than at times we want it to be. So it's, it's exactly what we want, but in a way, it's also exactly what we fear. And so as you move forward with this knowledge and this understanding, it brings you to the full moon in Aries, which is a fiery climax approaches. And this is a sense of passion and desire and determination. And this is a sense of your fire energy, which of course makes you, Leo, the wonderful, compassionate, you know, competitive person that you are, this person who is right there, who sees the way that things line up, who, you know, everybody wants a Leo in their corner. They just do. So here, that, that fire within you is just a light and you are seeing it move towards what you are battling for, towards what you desire in your life and in yourself and you are embracing your stubbornness but you are also embracing a breaking down of boundaries and this is going to be a very exciting moon for you which I really, I'm, yeah, that's, I'm really enjoying that. So here, yeah, Spirit is showing me that this is a very exciting moon because you're breaking down, showing me you you taking the ram's head and you battering down boundaries that you thought would define you for the rest of your life. And it's like, no, no, you're, you're tumbling the walls. Now the spirit animals for September are the bear spirit and the owl spirit. The bear spirit here, it says, take time out. Take time out to look at the seeds that you're planting over your heart. Take time out to connect with what you want. This is taking dominion over your world, over yourself. This is embracing your power. This is authority and being larger than life. And you're really embracing this kind of mama bear mentality, which, Leo, you embrace so very well because you are this fierce protector. And so this mama bear mentality is just going to be a part of you. And it's really coming from this bear spirit that is leading you forward and that you feel very at home with. This is, you know, this is being that protector and especially for those who are weaker than you and especially for those who you feel injustice is being brought to. You're like, no, you stand in your truth, you stand in your glory and you really, you really do kind of break down boundaries during this time and you're really going to love that. Now, we have the owl as your next spirit animal for this time and it says, you see clearly now. 
Now, the owl is magnificent, especially with this Pisces full moon, because it connects you, again, more deeply and more securely to the high priestess, which is a very good thing, but can also be a very overwhelming thing, because the high priestess doesn't really operate in our world the way that we human beings do. The high priestess sees things so much more differently, sees things so much more powerfully. And you have her counterpart right here with the magician. The magician is the more seen aspect of, you know, the high priestess coupling. You can also have the Virgo energy of the hermit come into play, and that is the more secretive aspect coming forward. But here, with the owl, you are deeply connected to wisdom. You have a sharp sense of vision and understanding. Visions can be coming your way. You get a lot of insights, a lot of ideas during this time. And you have keen observational skills. You're seeing what others do not want you to see, just as you are seeing the veil lifted from your eyes and you're seeing the truth behind people's masks. So this is going to be something that is very intense. Trust your insight, trust your intuition. You're really on point, but it can also be it could also be too intense. So if you tell spirit, you know what? No, I can't, I can't handle this right now. You know, I can't have all this power coming forward. If you tell the owl, owl spirit guide, you know, of September, it's, you can literally have a conversation and say, I love the insight. I love the wisdom that you are giving me, but I need it toned down a bit because it's too much for me to handle right now. And with everything that's going on, this almost feels like a breaking point instead of an empowering point. Spirit listens. Spirit really does listen. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to put down boundaries and say things clearly. And then in October, we have the spirit animals of the crow and the dove spirit. And it does seem like these are two real counterparts because we have the dove that brings peace and we have a crow and we have the flock of crows being called a murder of crows. So you have peace and you have murder and you think, wow, how do these two go together? Crows are brilliant. And I know it sounds funny to say, but they really are. They can learn more words than parrots. They, they are fantastic partners and parents. They, they really are magnificent. And we don't see it because we only see the outward. And we see the outward and we see the darkness and we think, ooh, kind of scary, right? But look at that crow. Look at the purple and the blue within her feathers, right? There's a depth of beauty that isn't seen because it's judged too quickly. So here, this is change, and this is sacred law. This is trusting in your personal integrity and intuition, and this is you speaking your truth. This is what the crow brings to us. And as you speak your truth, you find your yourself transformed because the truth transforms you. And as the truth transforms you, it also brings you messages. It brings what you really need to hear. So both of these birds are harbingers of messages. And the dove spirit brings messages of peace and of hope. So the crow spirit brings messages of change, and it says co-create with spirit, because spirit is right here with you. And as you have the dove spirit coming forward, bringing messages of hope, this helps heal broken hearts. This helps heal hurts and wounds. And it's gentle compassion and a release from the pain that holds you back. And here it says, be peace. So the dove spirit is bringing that peace forward that crowns you. I'm just seeing here the owl, the crow, and the dove. It really brings you a power to fly forward, Leo, which is what, which is what you want. And it, it grounds you in a way with the bear spirit where it's like, I know my truth more now than ever before. And it leads you to the seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is being patient with prosperity. And I know we don't really like to be patient with prosperity. We want it yesterday. But here, it's kind of like, okay, you can pick the prosperity too soon. And it's just not as sweet. Or it rots in the basket. You know? And you're not going to have that lush enjoyment of it. Know that you are tending your gardens. Know that you are embracing a prosperity that is well-deserved and well-desired. And that you are moving forward towards something so much more so much more empowering, so much more invigorating, so much more than what you had originally thought. And as you are moving forward in this power of understanding and in this power of self, you see you better. The high priestess also comes through in, yeah, in this time frame because you have the three of pentacles and the three of swords. So here, 
I see that connection with the sacred feminine. It's with the empress energy, most definitely. But spirit is also saying it's with the high priestess energy. It's with a truth that had once been, been veiled. A voice that we thought we had lost. A power we questioned that we ever had. And as you're stepping forward in this understanding, know that the weight of the prosperity is coming. Know that, yeah, know that the abundance is leading you forward, but don't, don't rush it. Don't rush it. This is happening in, happening in divine time. And in divine time, you are seeing yourself move forward because there is prosperity that you are embracing. There is a wealth that you are walking in. There is a richness of your gardens and of your hopes and of your dreams. Make sure that you look at the bigger picture because there is going to be a tendency here to get very caught up in the small, minute details. And here it's like, look at the big picture, look at where it is that you want to be, how it is that you want to move forward, and what it is that you desire. Because as you do so, you start to create more, you start to focus more, and you can you can see, okay, this needs this needs to kind of, you know, stew longer, it needs to cook longer here or, or grow more. And this, this can be enjoyed. This can be embraced. This can be empowered. And as you're embracing this and as you're moving forward in this passion and in this knowledge, you are creating. And this is all internally. You are creating something beautiful internally for yourself. And you are really embracing the way that you want to move forward. You're stepping into a grace, into an understanding, into a compassion for yourself and a knowledge of your being that once felt so very far away. And it's like, no, no more. No more of it is it out there. You know, unobtainable. It's right here with you. And that's going to be something where you're really coming into balance with this. You're, you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, you know, the fruit needs to become ripe on the vine. It just does. Become ripe on the tree. And I get that. And here, it's I get to embrace the wealth of a harvest that is coming up well, that is really springing forward, that is bringing me so much more. And as it is, I'm seeing and I'm giving myself credit for hard work well done. I'm giving myself credit for moving forward in a way that is powerful and that is abundant and that is breaking down boundaries and giving me a true sense of knowledge, identity, and, and power of self. This is something that is not defined and guided by anybody else, though others will try to take credit for it. It's from you. It's from your hard work. It's from your dedication. It's from your determination. And as you move forward in this hard work, dedication, determination, you are inspired, you are invigorated, and you move forward in a truth that really is yours. And here, it is also saying that it's divinely guided. You are going to find yourself divinely guided during this time towards a new set of wealth, a new set of prosperity, a new set of, a new sense of identity. And it's a new set of, of what you want from life. It's kind of like you're looking at things in a very new, very powerful, very intense way that brings, brings a new light to the situation. You're putting in these stained glass, you know, these stained glass pieces, and it's illuminating you so much more powerfully, so much more beautifully, and so much more intensely. And as it is, and as you are taking in this knowledge and climbing to new heights and being inspired and not being afraid to ask questions and to go deeper, you have the Ace of Swords right here. And this is God's source spirit. However, you see the divine, the universe, cutting through your doubts and fears, saying it's time to move forward. It's time to look at things differently. It's time to, you know, really kind of get down to the nitty gritty of the whys and the how comes and to be intensely curious and intensely, you know, intensely inspired to move forward. This is knowledge coming your way. And this is you soaking that knowledge up like a sponge. This is also you being forged. A lot of you Leos have gone through a very intense time, especially when it comes to prosperity, when it comes to the wealth that you are creating, honing and cultivating on this earthly plane. And what it is, is think of a sword being made, all right? A sword is put into a, I'm going to say furnace, but I know that's the wrong word for it. And it is forged, it is hammered and the blade is, is made thin and sharp and it takes time and effort and tremendous skill because 
as you're hammering the blade, okay, things can become, there can be stress fractures, I believe that's what they're called, and the blade can shatter. And so at times we have had the blades that we are given shatter because they weren't, they weren't made correctly. You know, we were still gathering up the knowledge. We didn't have all the knowledge, all the understanding, all the reasoning. And those are the times where we sit there and we question ourselves. It's like, man, I thought I, I had this knowledge. I thought I had everything all worked out. And the divinity was like, nah, no, you didn't. It wasn't a sword given to you by me. It was a sword forged by you with not all the information that you needed. This is a sword forged by divinity. It is strong. It is stable. It is secure. And it is leading you forward. Do not deny it. All right? And sit there, if you can, and meditate on the way that you want to move forward. Kind of think about things before acting because this power comes in, this knowledge comes in, this insight comes in, and you will see that you, <coughs> excuse me, get ideas that you hadn't had before. You get inspired in ways that you didn't think you would be. And it moves you to the magician. It moves you to taking the power of the high priestess, this power that is intensely private, intensely personal, intensely shrouded, and it brings it into the light. Now, this can be also very hard for some of you Leos, especially if you have kind of a bit more of a mystical side in your chart, all right? You're going to want to sit there and say, no, I keep this for myself. If that's what you want to do, that's completely cool. Then you manifest and you are the magi magician of your own life, your own self, and nobody else needs to see it. This is when your heart comes in. But for others of you, this is going to be a time where you stand up and you say, as above, so below, and I claim it. And I claim it and I announce it to the world. And so here, it's not that you have to you know, do anything big. It can be that you just move this power forward. And you move it forward in a very intense and a very real way. And it redefines you. Now, even if this is a very private you know, thing for you, even if you're much more comfortable behind the scenes, Spirit is showing me that you need to claim this energy. Spirit is saying, you know, claim this power, claim this truth, Stand before the altar of your existence and know that as above, so below. As you think it, so it becomes. As you, as you move towards it and as you speak it, so it is within your life. And it brings you knowledge and prosperity during this time. And as, you brings, as it brings you this knowledge and this prosperity, it feeds the fire that fuels you forward. You are a person of passion. All right? You are a person of intuition. You are a person of creativity. Remember, fire is what keeps the world going. All right? Prometheus, Prometheus, I believe I'm saying that right, stole fire from the gods and he got punished for all of eternity. You know, And so here, the gift of fire is astoundingly important. So the gift that you carry, even if you denounce it within yourself, even if you sit there and are thinking, yeah, there's no big deal, you know, I'm just me and I mess up more times than I don't, the power of fire that you carry within yourself is a power that is sacredly guarded. It's like, what is it, the Vestal vir Virgins? Yeah, the ones who guard, guarded the sacred flame, right? In ancient Rome, I believe that was. And they were, they were considered that if that flame went out, they were considered astoundingly important because if that flame went out, they believed that the empire could fall. They believed that everything would go out with it. And so here, the power that you bring forward is the power of the sun. It's the power of the core of the earth. And as you are embracing it, and as you are moving forward in it, you are seeing yourself being guided. You are seeing yourself stand in your truth, in your understanding, and in what you desire. And as you do so, you gain a deeper knowledge. You gain a, a sense of, I can create the world that I want because I have the God's head within me. I know that I am a part of this universe, that stardust runs through my veins. And as stardust runs through my veins, power is a part of me. And that power is what I'm embracing. And that power is fueled by your heart. And it does have you facing a karmic debt. Now, we sit there and, you know, karmic debts have been coming up a lot lately. And it's kind of like, okay, enough. But when karmic debts are paid, when hardships, pains, and disappointments are really looked at, we are freed. And that's what you're doing. You're freeing yourself. You're freeing yourself to a wealth and to a place of power that, you know, <laughs> that makes your jaw fall on the floor. That makes you look at things and go, I didn't think this could be me. I didn't think I could move forward this way. I didn't think I could have this power. And you're finding out that you can. And now situations and things are going to come up 
that make you doubt yourself, that make you look at things and say, I can't believe this. You know, this is nonsense. This is hard. This is ridiculous. And it can have to do here, okay? It becomes bigger within the mind, yes. But it has to do with heartbreak and pain and disappointment. It has to do with you walking into wealth, all right? And feeling as if at times, every time you get close to wealth, it gets stolen away from you. It's like you feel like you take one step forward and then you get pushed 15 steps back. And what spirit is saying is that this time it will pass and it will pass. Yeah, it will pass quite profoundly and you will be moved forward to a time of seeing that you were forged. You were forged in knowledge. You were forged in battle. You were forged in the truth of what you want. And you are not going to be this, this person hiding away in the corner. That's not you. You are the person standing in truth and in power. And now people say with the five of swords, oh, you know, it's a bit of a bully card. You should be able to give those people back their swords and everything should be fair. So the five of swords isn't being fair. Here's the thing with life. And I know we don't like to say it and everybody gets a gold star and everything like that. But that's not how life works. It's just, it's just not, you know? And so here, it's, it's that truth that comes forward where it's like, listen, I won. And in medieval times, if you told a medieval person after they won and after they won a sword, which was like a bazillion million dollars, right? And you told them you had to give it back to the person. They'd look at you and think you were absolutely insane. Kings had lost their thrones over being that weak, all right? And so here, they wouldn't give them back their, their sword. So what, they could run them through afterwards so that they could let their anger build and come at them? No. This is saying here, know your power and know your worth and move forward. Not in spite, but in what's mine is mine. What's one is one. What's forged in my truth is kept by me and not given to you. And I move forward in this knowledge. And I move forward in this power because I am a person. Spirit is saying, I am a person who will not question the bounty that is handed to me. I am a person who will walk forward in it and not turn away from it. And it leads you to God's source spirit, however you see the divine universe, handing you a gift of prosperity, handing you a gift of wealth, handing you a gift of, of power. Because wealth, whether it be financial wealth or something you value as much as money, is always honored. You know, it's always seen as powerful and it raises you up. This is, this is like having the seeds to plant during, yeah, during the new moon that bring to you wealth and power and understanding that you never thought you could have, but you always knew was a part of your soul and yourself. This is saying that you are moving forward towards something so much more. And yet at times it felt like it was denied. It was denied you. This is what you've worked for. And this is what you're rising in. Okay. This is what your angels are resurrecting you to. And I know people sit there and say, Dane, I don't want to be resurrected. I don't want to come after, out of the ashes. Every single day you wake up, you come out of the ashes of sleep. You come out of the ashes of the past to embrace the future. And it doesn't matter if you go to sleep for the night or if you're taking a nap, you are always rising from the ashes. And so here you are doing so in prosperity. You are doing so in a recharged rebirth. And it leads you to change happening fast when it comes to your passion, when it comes to your creativity, when it comes to the way that you move forward. And it's like, okay, ready or not, here it comes. Ready or not, let's go. You know, let's go, let's move forward, and let's get this done. And you are accelerated. You really are. Your heart knows this change is calling to you. And this change is pulling you forward in a way where even if you plugged your ears, you wouldn't be able to ignore it. Think of it like a siren's call but not in that, you know, ship crash type of way, but in the way that you see something so astoundingly beautiful and so astoundingly true to your soul that you don't want to turn from it because that's where you're supposed to be. And that's what you're embracing within your magic, within your truth, within your understanding. And it leads you to a greater knowledge. It leads you to a greater place. And as it does in the public arena here, now this could be from your past, this could be from your present, this could be, you know, a, a mixture of them both coming together. But this is heartbreak and pain and disappointment. This is, I can't. 
Do you know how far down I've fallen? Do you know how much I've gone through? Do you know how hard it is? And the Three of Swords is yes. Yes, I know how hard it is. And that's what Spirit says to you. I know how hard it is. But I've given you nothing that you cannot handle. Even if it felt like you couldn't at the time. And this heartbreak, this pain, this disappointment, it's forging you. It's, it's given you insight. It's given you wisdom. It's given you a connection, okay, to, to shattered spirits. And we're all shattered spirits, okay, in a way that if it were easy. And I'm not talking about the absolute horrific, but, you know, at times, yes. And here, it's like nothing is without a reason. Do not let the heartbreak become what defines you. Do not let the hurt become who you are. Because here you're looking at it and you're owning it. And you're saying, you know what, no. This could be another person's truth that they spoke over you. This could be an abandonment that defined you. Okay? This could be, you know, bad choices made that you think, I'm never going to come out of this. I'm never going to walk away from this. But you are. And yes, they will be with you because they make up your story. But they are not your whole story. And as you see this, you have a dying away of the old self, a rebirth of the new. You have the Scorpio energy come forward, time frame, October 23rd to November 21st. You have yourself changing, transforming. Also the great equalizer. It's kind of like knowing that yes, death calls to all, is one of the things, and I know that's morbid, but it's also kind of like, you know, six feet of earth make us all of one size, which is a poem, and I forget it. But it's saying that in the end, we're all the same. And it's true. This is what cannot be outrun. And this is what cannot be denied. No matter how much we try to make it look like we never age. No matter how much we try to turn back the hands of time. This is an energy, and this is a fact, that we as human beings, and no, not human beings, living beings, can never outrun. We are always changing. We are always becoming something different. And even a rock will one day become sand. So here, it is seeing that you are transformed, that there was the old self, and now there is the new. And it can be that you're in the midst of this transformation. And it might be hard, and a lot of times it is, especially when you look at who you are, and you look at who you are, and you look at who you want to be, and you sit there and you want to throw your hands up in the air and say, well, I just don't know. I just don't know. The transformation is not always easy. It seldom is, actually. But it is well worth it. And Leo, you will see that. It brings you to a resurrection as you have this transformation. It brings you to this sense of arising, the sense of the time actually being well spent. And you seeing that and you honoring that within yourself as you rise, as you embrace, as you transform, as you become. And it leads you to knowing that your angels work with you. It leads you to your angels seeing you. It leads you to you seeing your angels, which is the more important thing because your angels always see you. And it is that sense with the high priestess, right? In the perfect mind, the thunder of truth, in uh, Gnostic texts, I believe. It is said, when you are closest to me, I am furthest from you. And when you are furthest from me, I am closest to you. And that's what judgment is. That's what this card is. It is being taken out of the darkness. It is being raised in fiery passion. It is being moved towards something greater and something more that is profoundly you and profoundly different than where you had thought you would be or how you had thought you would move forward. And it leads you. It leads you to being a student of your prosperity, to being a student of your abundance, to looking at what you desire and saying, yeah, I'm never going to stop looking. I'm never going to stop learning. I am taking this in and I am being transformed. Because this wealth is transforming me, and I am transforming it into the harvest that I want 
to yield into the prosperity that divinity has given me, into the hard work not being wasted, but having that light shine down, having that light illuminate what I need to see and the way that I need to move forward. It's coming to things with beginner's mind and beginner's eyes. It's not sitting there with preconceived notions and preconceived prejudices that we always bring to the table. It's coming to it like a child. It's like the emperor's new clothes, right? It was only a child that sat there and said to the king, what the heck, you're naked. You know, why don't you have any clothes on? Everybody else was told, if you do not see the finery of this fabric, you're a fool. Nobody wanted to be a fool. The child didn't care. Here, it is not caring how others perceive you, though it is, you know, kind of a bit because you still want to move forward in your integrity. But it is not being held back. And is sitting there and saying, this is who I am. And this is the prosperity that I want in my life. That I am moving forward in. And it brings you. It's like this innocent understanding. This transformation of power. This questioning truth. And this, you know, lovely beginning. Brings you to being the queen of your existence. Brings you to embracing your power. Brings you to understanding what you desire. To having this passion, this insight. This sense of, you know, I'm not afraid to roll up my sleeves and to, to go for what I want. This is you. A fierce warrior queen. Hands on. Determined, dedicated, fiery, protective, gorgeous. Intense. And this is what you're embracing. This is who's looking over every single aspect of this reading and saying, this is me. It has been a long road coming, but I am not turning my back on everything that I've earned. Let's see what Luna has to say for herself. How will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. How will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Leo be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. And one bonus card. Fantastic. Truth, resistance, peace. Truth, resistance, and peace. Action. Be bold and make the first move. Prosperity lies ahead. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Conclusions are within reach. Believe in the impossible. I love that. It leads you to looking at the big picture, to taking aim. So here, truth is resistance. It is resilient. It is coming through even though it is trying to be crushed. So here, the prosperity comes through even though it has been such a long battle, such a intense, you know, intense time. And so the truth comes through, the prosperity comes through, the bounty comes through, and it is, it is resistant to what holds it back, what's trying to deny it. And as it comes through and as you embrace this power, you embrace peace, harmony, understanding. You embrace this greater sense of self, this greater sense of, of determination leading you forward. It brings you to action. 
It brings you to an action of your heart. It brings you to the action of your inner power, your inner magic, and it brings you to action as you claim your, your karmic path and as you claim your karmic truth. It leads you to being bold and making the first move as you stand your ground and embrace the wealth that divinity is giving you. Because you know full-heartedly that as things move forward in a way that is breathtaking, you know that prosperity lies ahead. You know that you're moving towards a greater power and a greater passion. And it leads you to the end of a tough cycle approaching. It leads you to seeing the heartbreak, to seeing yourself reborn, to looking at what has held you back and saying no more, no more. And it leads you to conclusions being within reach, to you seeing the way that life is working out in a way that takes your breath away, in a way that you think, oh wow, I would never have thought this. I would never have seen this. And now you believe in the impossible because the impossible becomes possible. The impossible becomes part of your heart and your truth and yourself. You look at the bigger picture and you take aim. You see what it is that you want. You don't get caught up in, in the details because those can absolutely distract you. It's like you look at the big picture. You see the power, the beauty of what it is that you want. And you take aim towards that destiny, towards that destination. And your subconscious message for this time from Luna, from the moon, is balance. Balance comes in. Balance guides you. Balance leads you. Right? You're finding your balance through the energy of this moon as you're balancing the spiritual with the practical. And as you do so, your commitment is being tested to what you want, to the way that you want to move forward, to what it is that you look for. So it's like this balance comes in and then you start to stumble. You start to you know, be pulled back to old patterns, old habits. And you're saying, no, no, I'm moving forward. Because the subconscious message for this whole entire time is the Eight of Pentacles. Your hard work, your dedication, moving you forward through a portal to a new beginning that once felt like it would take your life to get to. That you have worked so hard to manifest, to embrace, and to, to step into. To have be a part of you. And it takes your breath away. This is your determination. This is everything that you've worked for. This is also saying that you can be very caught up in work during this time when it comes to your prosperity, when it comes to what it is that you want. But what's also very beautiful here is that in your inner self, we have the seven of pentacles. Now subconsciously we have the eight of pentacles and then we have the nine. So seven, eight, nine, waiting for the harvest to come, then working with it, building it, growing it, and rejoicing in it, taking in its lusciousness. So this is what you've been waiting for. And this hard work guides you. It guides you to so much more than you had expected and than you had, than you had realized could be a part of your life and your existence. All right, Leo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation. A once again, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy, a release of all that has held us back and an embrace of prosperity, abundance, brilliance, and joy of self. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you,
May you forever move forward in peace and in harmony, Leo.